you about uh, that the strategy of the firm and the strategy of a single project as a temporary organization are different things. Well, in our article, we defined, uh, defined the project strategy as a direction in a project that contributes to success of the project in its environment. But we didn't actually uh, provide any uh, definition of uh, what the direction actually is. The direction can be provided in a project by a plan, but it can also be a perspective, a kind of a collective mind, uh, or some other aspect of a strategy uh, that uh, takes place in the project as a temporary organization. And then when we say that the uh, uh, strategy, project strategy contributes to success uh, of the project in its environment, so we didn't actually define um, what the success actually is, but we uh, left it open so that the success can be, for example, a project can, uh, success can be uh, uh, the following of uh, uh, the parent organization's uh, rules and regulations, so that a so, uh, project considers itself as very successful when obedient, obedient its master, uh, or uh, if the project uh, uh, aims uh, towards new developments that are not in line even the uh, company's strategy, uh, it can be that the project considers its success as uh, deviating radically even from uh, what the company even expects from it. And uh, when we are talking about the project uh, and its environment, we also see that uh, the parent company and its organization can be an external environment to a project. So the project can compete with other projects in the same company, or there might be conflicts or controversies between the project and its management and the company and its management. And in this way, uh, the company's environment can be supportive to a project, it can allow or uh, uh, provide uh, autonomy to the project to develop something new, uh, some, something really uh, new and novel. Um, or then uh, the project's uh, company environment, the parent organization's organ organization's environment can be even rather hostile uh, uh, for the project and uh, making even the project's life difficult. So the next uh, few animated pictures shows this uh, idea. And um, why I'm emphasizing this is that uh, many of uh, the project's strategy research papers, they assume uh, that uh, one single parent company kind of a drops the task to a project and the project is taken it as given and the only strategy of a project would be to be the obedient servant of the master and actually implement uh, the parent company's strategy and not necessarily uh, its own strategy in that way. Okay, now, um, now we have a company here that has a business strategy and the company is in the external business environment. We have a project in the company which project has a strategy, and now 
uh, not only the environment that was external to the company, but also the company's own organization uh, turns out to be the external environment for the project. Well, we are often talking about the parent company and assuming that there is only one firm whose project the project is. Now, the project can be moved here in this picture uh, to the boundaries or limits uh, of uh, the company organization so that the project in a way faces two environments the company environment and the environment which is the external business environment also external to the company. Now we can add there another company. Many projects uh, are bridging uh, the development of two or several companies or it even can be that the project as a temporary organization uh, drives its own business and uses those companies as its resources. So now the project in this picture doesn't have one single parent company but actually has two or it can be turned uh, the other way around and say that these companies are not even parents or uh, important, significant, strong stakeholders to the project, project but just uh, providing resources to the projects and the project has some kind of a dominate, dominating role and is a driver uh, of the business and the companies are not. Well, in our paper uh, we developed this kind of a framework uh, where uh, we had two axes, the level of project autonomy, low or high, and the number of strong stakeholder organizations. And these strong stakeholder organizations, they refer to, for example, the parent company. If there is one strong stakeholder organization, that is assumably uh, the parent company of the project, but can be also other. Uh, and some other uh, uh, strong stakeholder organizations like customers, uh, like uh, joint venture partners, and uh, so on. Well, when we are talking about the level of project autonomy, I also raise one very interesting question to you. Is the autonomy, is it given to the project or is the autonomy taken by the project? This is a rather in interesting question. So is it uh, based on the project's, uh, let's say, uh, stamina of uh, really taking the autonomy and uh, taking uh, and, uh, and uh, leading its own way? or is it that someone has to uh, provide or give the autonomy to the project. Okay, but let's see the different uh, project uh, strategies that the project can uh, select based on these two dimensions. If there is one strong stakeholder organization and if the autonomy is low, it can be that the project's strategy can be an obedient servant of its per parent organization, for example. And the project success comes from doing obediently what uh, the parent organization or the one st strong stakeholder wants. Well, uh, if the autonomy is high, but still there is one uh, strong stakeholder organization, then the project can take a strategy of being an independent innovator to bring certain totally new uh, novel products to the company that even renews the company strategy. Well, if we move to the right side uh, of the uh, 
picture here, then there we have uh, several strong stakeholder organizations. And uh, if the level of project autonomy is low, the project can take a strategy of being a flexible mediator. That is, the project can be a kind of a compromiser. If the project is, for example, a project for joint venture or a collaborative project uh, among uh, several strong organizations and they own all have their own strategies and they all want to take their own ways which are different then the project somehow has to uh, mediate or compromise and be flexible to try to get uh, uh, a successful outcome from the project in that environment and then in several stakeholder, strong stakeholder organizations and high project autonomy, the project can take the role of being a strong leader. So the project's strategy is being a strong leader for these organizations. With high autonomy, uh, the project can always ally with that strong party uh, that supports uh, the project's uh, aspirations and uh, somehow the project has always a choice uh, a little bit to diminish uh, the impact of certain other stakeholders that are more like constraining uh, the advancement of the project or even block certain uh, stakeholders out from the play if they start being uh, too difficult of uh, trying to hinder the advancement of the project's strategy. So a kind of a strong leader that uh, uh, makes its own way and takes the stakeholders with uh, the project. Okay, uh, this was about uh, project strategy. As the strategy of a single project. And uh, I tried to contrast it uh, well, with uh, our two, uh, the strategy of a company or the companies that are surrounding the project. And I think that these aspects are relevant when we are considering also project portfolio management and what kind of a projects, uh, with what kind of a strategies we have in our portfolios. Okay, that was all. Looking forward to talking to you soon again. Let's see in other lectures. Bye.